all right so we will watch a video on cnbc which is about uh, why oil prices can turn negative now that's an interesting topic because how can the price of something be negative and that to oil which is so expensive in normal times how can it be negative okay so let's, so let's watch it and i'm sure we'll learn a lot of economics of the oil prices by watching this video kan je ook niet meer wachten? Live Sport is terug op Ziggo Sport. Met Formule 1, maar ook La Liga en de Premier League. Gratis voor Ziggo klanten. Dat is het plezier van Ziggo. The coronavirus pandemic caused an economic shutdown unlike the world has ever seen. The US economy, which runs on oil, came to a halt as people followed orders to remain in their homes and not go into their offices. On April 20th, the effects of the pandemic forced crude oil prices in the futures market to sink below zero and into the negative territory for the first time in history. Oil prices plunged into negative territory. The price settled at, get this, negative $37 per barrel, which is down 305%. Okay, so it has happened already. Okay, so that's one good information here that the oil price has become negative in past so it's some it's not like it's going to happen it has happened i don't know what's the current status but i think a couple of months back it uh, it was negative meaning people would pay you today to take their oil off their hands when west texas intermediate crude futures fell into negative territory it really shocked the global economy this was an event that was unprecedented and before it happened people didn't think it was possible it doesn't really make sense when you try to wrap your head around it. How could you pay somebody to take oil off your hands? It's no secret that the U.S. economy... That's true, right? How can you pay somebody to take your oil? And that can only happen when keeping the oil or storing the oil is very costly for you. And in fact, that's what is happening, right? The countries are not uh, equipped to store oil. Uh, so they are paying money so that somebody else can take it from them uh yeah so that's interesting so let's economy still runs okay. primarily on oil it's been america's largest source of energy since surpassing coal in 1950 with an average of 20 million barrels consumed per day it's also an industry that along with natural gas supports more than 10 million jobs nationwide and contributes to 7.6 percent of the gdp America does rely on oil in many ways. It's about 90% of the energy that we use in transportation, and it's a more than a third of the overall energy that we use. In fact, it's probably going to stay that way for a lot, uh, a lot longer. The Energy Information Agency uh, administration predicts that going out to 2050, it's still going to be uh, over a third of the energy that we're going to use. So how was it possible for oil to reach a negative value? And what does it mean for the American economy? To understand what happened, it's important to know how a futures contract functions. So the futures market is a way to bet on the future price of a certain commodity. So that can be oil, corn, wheat. Those are all examples of commodities. And the way that a futures contract works is it's tied to a delivery date in the future. So you are locking into a contract, both a buyer and a seller, and you are, ag are agreeing to delivery of that commodity on a certain date and at a certain price. So the way the oil market works is it's divided between the physical market, which is the oil itself, as well as the financial market. The financial market is made up of various futures contracts that are tied to specific grades of crude, as well as specific delivery dates. Different types of oil from all across the world are traded by barrels in their individual marketplaces. But two futures contracts serve as the major benchmark for oil pricing. Brent crude trades oil from the North Sea in Northern Europe, setting the standard for international oil prices. While the West Texas Intermediate, or WTI, trades a specific grade of oil traded in Cushing, Oklahoma, that serves as a domestic benchmark for oil prices. A uh, refinery might have a contract with a producer and say, we will pay you the Brent price, um, or we'll pay you the Brent price minus the transportation costs, or, you know, that it's all subject to negotiation. And uh, those two are well known. It's, a, it's a, uh, a shorthand, if you will. And a lot of times other crudes are priced off of those crudes because they're well known. Uh, they, the quality is high. 
and uh, it has a long track record. Similar to most traded commodities, oil prices rely heavily on how much of it is available on the market. In other words, supply and demand. Oil, like, like just about anything else in the world, is uh, determined, the prices are determined by a willing buyer and a willing seller. And so that means that uh, as demand goes up, more people are, are buying it, the price will typically go up if supply stays the same. And uh, vice versa, if supply suddenly increases, uh, then, then typically the price will go down if demand stays the same. The demand is determined by how much oil is needed at any given moment, due to its crucial role in the economy. High demand has often been associated with a healthy economic growth. Historically, oil demand has moved with the economy of a country. Uh, it's been very tightly tied because almost all transportation comes from burning oil and a lot of other industrial processes use oil. So when the economy is humming along strongly, the demand goes up. And when you have a recession, the demand goes down. On the other hand, supply is usually determined by the producers, who have control over its output. Historically, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, otherwise known as OPEC, has played a crucial role in determining the supply. OPEC currently has 13 member countries, including Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela as founding members. However, a lot has changed in recent years, as the U.S. surpassed both Russia and Saudi Arabia to become the world's largest crude oil producer since 2018, thanks to the rise in production from American shale fields. Essentially, these countries and, and OPEC, everyone is competing for market share. Everyone wants to produce more for their country, but also the optionality to export it to another country and especially growth regions such as China, Asia. Being an investor or a producer in the oil industry means keeping an eye on this fine balance between supply and demand, as well as the geopolitical events that could threaten the industry. Never forget about geopolitics and the impact it can have on the oil price, um, because that can be that X factor uh, of why oil may have a, a big premium or a big discount to fundamentals that you see in supply and demand. It's because geopolitics introduces other risk factors. A historic drop occurred on April 20th, 2020, with the U.S. oil prices on WTI dropped by almost 300%, trading around negative $37. What happened with oil in terms of the negative pricing in April uh, with the futures contract was rather unprecedented. We have seen negative prices before, uh, for example, last year we were talking about negative natural gas prices in Oaxaca in April 2019. Um, but that's more due to processing uh, or field issues, um, not um, what has happened specifically this time um, with the COVID-19 and, and the price war. Oil prices had been under pressure since January as China battled the spread of COVID-19. When the pandemic finally reached the rest of the world, demand took a devastating hit. People started talking about the demand going down two or three percent instead of growing by one or two percent, as was had previously been expected. But then, in the by the time it got to the United States and all over Western Europe, the forecasts were very different. And at the trough, we probably saw demand in April bottom out down thirty percent. Uh, so we've never seen anything like this, certainly in the last forty years uh, since world oil markets have developed. To make matters worse, a price war erupted between Saudi Arabia and Russia in early March, after OPEC and its allies failed to reach an agreement on deeper supply cuts. Oil saw its worst trading day in 20, 29 years yesterday. Both WTI crude and Brent crude lost nearly a quarter of their value, and the S&P energy sector ended the day 50% off its 52-week closing high. Saudi Arabia launched a price war against other key producers. As supply remained steady while demand struck record-breaking lows, the petroleum industry quickly began running out of storage space to put their oil. Cushing plays a very big role as one of the main hubs of that commercial storage. And Cushing, at the time of the negative contract, was around 70% uh, 70, 70 full. And what was left was perhaps already committed. So that was a huge uh, issue because Cushing plays one of the main roles in pricing the WTI contracts. As the delivery date for WTI grew near and investors had nowhere to put the oil, they soon began a massive sell-off, prompting an unprecedented crash into the negative territory. WTI is special in a way because it's so tightly uh, connected to physical um, oil. 
And so if you're upholding a, a contract for WTI, you're expected to take uh, possession of the oil. What was happening was the buyers who had bought a futures contract, which meant they had responsibility to take delivery of the oil, recognized that that storage was filling up and they had no place to put the oil and they didn't want the oil. Uh, and so they wanted to get out of the contract. Uh, usually they can get out of the contract by getting somebody else to take the oil instead at a positive price because oil is a valuable commodity. But there was nobody who wanted to take that oil, uh, particularly because it was located in an area that was producing way more oil than they needed. And the pipelines to move oil out of that area were completely full. The historic drop quickly sent shockwaves through the U.S. financial market. The Dow plunged by over 1,200 points over the following two days. And brokerage firms like Interactive Brokers reported taking a $109 million hit to cover its customers' losses. It was kind of what, like what happened in 2000, where we were wondering if the computers could roll over. Some of the trader computers couldn't even handle the negative. They weren't set up for a negative. So you can imagine the disarray and the surprise um, you know, that some traders faced the next morning when they looked at their margin calls or what they owed based on the severity of this drop. However, experts point out that although the event was unexpected, there is no need to panic. It was not unforeseen. The exchange itself saw it as a possibility ahead of time. Uh, they actually discussed what to do if that were to happen, reprogram their software and so forth. And at least one major media outlet uh, reported on it uh, you know, a week ahead of time before it happened. Um, also, some other products have gone negative in the past, things like natural gas. So I think it's important to put it in perspective that while this had never happened with oil before, uh, it was just on one particular instrument, the WTI. It was just for one day, and uh, it was seen as at least a remote possibility uh, ahead of the time that it happened. It was very few contracts. There was very little trading at those prices, and the price very quickly rebounded into positive territory. Now, prices are very low, uh, so that is a reflection of the fact that demand dropped uh, tremendously and uh, supply was not able to drop as quickly. Since then, we have seen actually production uh, in that area of the United States drop drastically and start to catch up with the drop in demand. The price of oil has steadily recovered since the event, jumping by nearly 90% in May and registering the best month on record for West Texas Intermediate. However, the petroleum industry is still reeling from the effects of the pandemic. Major companies like Chevron, Exxon, and ConocoPhillips have all announced deep production cuts. And Whiting Petroleum, once a large player in the oil industry, became the first major company to declare bankruptcy in April. The impact will likely be more severe for the U.S. shale industry that is often in heavy debt due to its high production costs. We might not see the price go negative. I think that was just a quirky event, but we could see the price drop down into the teens or $10, and then we would see a real devastation of the shale industry. As it is, we're still likely to see a pretty big devastation. A lot of the shale companies are gonna go bankrupt. Um, because they've been betting on prices being 50 or $60 a barrel, and that would take a really massive rebound in the economy to happen. Just like any other sectors of the American economy, the health and the success of the petroleum industry now rests on how quickly and safely the U.S. can reopen for business. We know that when the economy gets back up and running and people feel safe and are all right so we learned a lot of things in, from this video right it started how things unfolded um yeah it started with uh, the corona crisis that happened in china it was very unprecedented nobody had thought that time uh, like uh, in february or january this year that uh, the crisis will spread over to the rest of the world and nobody had expected right uh, and countries were not simply not prepared for that and what happened uh, was that the virus spread across to many other countries so countries went into lockdown so there was no demand for the oil and when there is no demand for oil obviously you have a stockpile right you have a lot of oil uh, plenty of oil 
with you right there are a few countries that are producing or heavily relying on oil and they have oil uh, but they do not have the storage capacity because in a normal economy you would simply supply the oil to the other countries and then you have uh, yeah you can then use your um, yeah, uh, storage capacity optimally but when nobody is buying from you then uh, yeah how do you store the oil right the extra production how do you store it right uh, there is no supply chain available to supply it to other countries uh, and that's the reason why uh, oil price uh, you know became negative now it's also still a bit bit uh, difficult to understand how come it can be negative i mean it can be zero that's possible but how can it be negative i mean why would somebody pay you um, yeah to sell something right and that's that's possible actually in the financial market if you take into account the financial market you know it, you know in the video we learned about a bit about the future market where the contract is that at a future uh, in a future uh, time point there will be transactions there is already a contract that somebody is going to buy from you at a, a certain price but you simply do not have uh, storage capacity to buy things right uh, what, what will you do right you do not uh, you do not uh, want to buy them and then you pay a price for that so and that you know in in, in that sense it becomes uh, so the value of that contract basically becomes zero but it has a price so you have already paid for it so if you take that into account um, yeah uh, yeah it's a bit complex to understand how they are related because it's commodity and you have financial market but you combine both uh, it can happen that uh, the price of the commodity can very well be become uh, negative and that's exactly what has happened here um, and it happened only for a couple of days right it rebounded to a positive number now so now all price is positive but it's very very low uh, and and the reason being uh, that the demand for oil is simply not there in the world and uh, and uh, I, I think this is going to be a big problem for all the oil companies uh, you know let me show you something interesting so the biggest oil company uh, in the world is Exxon Mobil Okay, and let's see Exxon Mobil stock prices in Yahoo Finance. You will see that uh, yeah, there is a downward slope. It has uh, okay. Let's see the stock price of the oil companies, different oil companies. <coughs> let's see the trend let's see the trend in the last six months you see there's a gradual decrease and then it's slightly increasing over the last uh, few weeks but you see the drop in the price right so that's what happening to ExxonMobil it's one of the biggest oil company in the world uh, British Petroleum Self. let's see how uh, the price looks like uh, in a one month period it's fine in a six month period yes it's also more or less the same like uh, Exxon Mobil right there is a gradual drop and then it's stabilizing a bit yeah so oil companies are, uh, are being hit very hard uh, so the stock price has gone down and if it continues, right? If it continues couple of couple of years, then then many of these uh, oil companies will go bankrupt. They simply won't be able to, um, yeah, uh, maintain the operational cost. Uh, and oil companies are capital intensive. They need a lot of capital to be operational, and that is very difficult. That will be very difficult for them. So uh, many of them, I'm sure, will go bankrupt. Uh, well, most of the industry during this period, um, 
a suffering but uh, uh, oil industry is one such industry which is suffering perhaps uh, the most after the travel and tourism industry all right so something we learned today right how the commodity price can be negative and that to oil right i mean it if it was uh, sand or something else then it would have been uh, i mean things would have been different right because these are not very really costly products or commodities but oil is a very costly is a very pricey commodity and in a normal economy right everybody is talking about um everybody talks about uh, the oil thing the price of the oil right it it uh, if if you have oil then you are rich right the arabic countries the middle east countries are rich because they have oil right so oil is a very very expensive thing for many countries and uh, and you know in oil import is very important for many countries and that uh, uh, countries spend a lot of money on that um but turns out that in in difficult uh, situations like this it carries absolutely no value so it's something very interesting actually right how it plays out um yeah so we learn something we learn something different tomorrow on economics or finance okay so if you are new to this channel you can subscribe to this uh, we'll be live streaming a lot of these videos we'll be discussing um yeah a lot of these uh, interesting things about economics and finance personal finance and things like that and uh, yeah we'll, we'll talk about even other things like politics and so on okay thanks